What's going on everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode on my channel. As always, I'm Jay and guys, if you haven't noticed, this review is kind of late, but as they say, better late than never. And of course, I'm talking about Spider-Man Far From Home, which is the second in the iteration and agreement between the MCU and Sony to share Spider-Man. So in this film, uh, Peter ends up finding himself and his friends going on a school trip to uh, Europe, and he's just trying to be normal, especially since after losing Mr. Stark in the end of Avengers Endgame, you know, this whole kind of cloud has been following him of, uh, you know, is he going to be the next Tony Stark? And even then, Tony actually leaves him something of great importance. And uh, it's, it's really kind of a, a tipping point of his, you know, pressure and responsibility of kind of carrying on the mantle of kind of being a, a genius and kind of being the Iron Man for the new age. So anyway, guys, this is, uh, like I said, the second outing of Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And in this go-round, we actually are introduced to... Mysterio, we end up getting uh, Nick Fury in the film, and we do end up having a post-Endgame MCU film, which still takes place in Phase 3, apparently. So moving on to this film, what I really liked about it was a bunch of different things. First of all, I really liked how it was progressing after the Endgame story. They explained the whole blipping or how people were blinked out of existence and then they just showed up five years later. Somehow, all of Peter's friends were all blipped out of existence because that's just how it goes. Otherwise, you wouldn't have Ned, MJ, uh, Flash, and all those people kind of being the same age. And of course, like I said, we were introduced to Mysterio. And in this case, obviously, if you were a fan of any type of Marvel comics, you knew that Mysterio clearly wasn't a hero. Love the imagery in this film. They did a lot of kind of hallucination almost tricks, as it were. Um, they did put Peter through his paces, and this was actually the first film that consistently drove home the idea of Spider-Man using his spider sense. It's almost kind of cool. It's almost like when, in a kung fu movie, people get blindfolded and they can do all the kind of mastery moves and stuff without noticing or looking at things physically. He gets new costumes. That way he kind of is inconspicuous. He ended up popping the uh, reveal to MJ pretty fast. Uh, he did tell her that he was Spider-Man. For this film series, MJ's like depiction and role, it works. Her and uh, Tom Holland's and Daya, that is, get along very well. They have great chemistry. It's not the MJ that we grew up with. It's not the MJ that I would prefer, but still, it's a great AM MJ nonetheless for the films and for the purposes of the films. Some of the things that I like were the quirky little back and forth with Happy and Aunt May. Uh, they're kind of like having a nice little fling. The reveal at the end with, uh, the end credits and post credit scenes where you find out first that, um, Mysterio has actually name dropped Peter and identified him, which is a crazy what the F moment. I have no idea how they're going to go forward with this. And then, of course, in the other one, which you find out that Nick Fury and Agent Hill in this whole film were not themselves. They were actually Talos and his wife, I believe, which are, of course, the uh, uh, scrolls from the Captain Marvel film, who we found out were good and are actually an Alliance member in this universe. Nicholas J. Fury is actually on a beach, but not really. He's on a big-ass spaceship with a whole F-ton of scrolls, which raises even more questions. One of the things I didn't like, though... Um, essentially, now we can confirm in this series that no one gives a shit about Uncle Ben. You know, Uncle Ben, with great power comes great responsibility. That whole thing was iconic in Spider-Man's origin, but this whole new series of Spider-Man with Tom Holland and whatnot seems to just ignore the fact that Peter even had that kind of basis to become a superhero and everything, and they credit everything to Tony Stark. One of the hallucination scenes is Tony Stark literally rising from the grave to try and kill him with a skull inside of an Iron Man suit. And I thought, okay, well, you know, why don't we have some type of flashback or something to Uncle Ben? Uh, this film was overall very enjoyable. It, it kept me at the same level of enjoyment as the first film. I thought they had some very good uh, kind of things to kind of push Peter. You showed him kind of being anxious. You showed him kind of being pushed and pressured into becoming the next Tony Stark, which really he's trying to be himself first, obviously, which is a, a big thing. And again, it's still playing on that kind of teenage moment in time where, you know, the adolescence is really drawing in on him, which is fantastic. But overall, guys, if you haven't seen it already, you need to go see it. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure I just spoiled half the movie for you. But I did give this a three and a half out of five stars. Another great, solid Marvel movie. 
it wasn't mediocre, it wasn't generic, it was actually just as good, if not just slightly better than Spider-Man Homecoming. But anyway guys, that's all the time that I have for today. Tell me what you thought of Spider-Man Far From Home, let me know down below in the comments. If you like this video, click the like button as it does help the channel. And if you do enjoy my content, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification, that way you never miss a moment of my content. But until next time guys, I'm Jay, take care.